okay so nice to meet you again in this christmas time and uh, today we'll uh, work together and try to uh, comment or so propose a solution to these exercises that we published yesterday uh, in preparation for the written exam so the idea is that the exam is uh, just one hour for uh, where, where did i write it uh, four questions okay where you have to reply in a let's say uh, synthetic short uh, and uh, schematic way uh, so that uh, uh, we don't uh, you don't lose time to write pages and pages and text uh, that may be also confusing or difficult to to, to decode uh, but uh, let's try to 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 stay on the point uh, that the question is asking uh, the idea is that uh, the written part uh, will have no code no project related no implementation questions okay that will be for the uh, project presentation mm? uh, uh, that we will we will verify of course the design the project uh, and the implementation here is just about the let's call it the theory okay or the methodology that we are trying to what we try to to develop dur during the course okay uh, for for the number lovers uh, the score of this part is uh, 13 points with a minimum of seven don't ask me how we can split that into four questions because i didn't think about it yet but <laughs> we will you now there are fractional numbers that will help us in some way uh, the idea of this 13 point is that with the 20 points of the project okay which is for it's a 46 split uh, and the total is uh, 33 per, uh, points uh, in total so we can have a, a good ceiling to start from okay let's try to keep towards the ceiling okay um one hour i think uh, would be more than enough time uh, considering the time the kind of uh, questions and the depth of questions so i tried we try to to develop some examples uh, question of course we, the question that you saw are more uh, you know bite toward the, the beginning of the course uh, and not on the last topics because they were more recently done and they are not completed yet we will do another say simulation uh, towards the end and in the last week of the course uh, where we'll try to put more questions on the latest part of the course all the multimedia voice and so on hmm? and also the evaluation uh, and the usability studies and so on just to give you some examples of questions so what uh, i i propose to, to read the question together you already uh, saw them and try to uh, propose a solution okay so uh, we're trying to do eight uh, questions in one hour instead of four hmm? uh, we won't need we won't be so precise pro probably it will be, be more synthetic or schematic uh, but just to give you a flavor of what kind what uh, kind of questions and what kind of answers we are expecting expecting more or less okay so um, the first two questions are uh, analyzing uh, some interface hmm? an example of uh, some fragment of an interface and when we ask uh, to analyze them uh, question number one is uh, describe the main violations to NIST and usability heuristics for this uh, uh, snippet so sorry for that being in italian but we, we really grabbed it from uh, the polytechnic website uh, a couple of days ago or no last week uh, uh, when we saw that horror and we couldn't resist uh, uh, using that uh, uh actually um if we translate it in english uh, uh, the question is do you want to participate to a seminar and the options are yes or yes and it was very nice uh, and uh, upon a careful inspection we see that the yes number one and yes number two are actually different from one for one character uh, which is the 16 or se uh, instead of 17 of december okay and uh, then it the send but if you don't want to send us a text saying if you don't want to participate don't select any option of course it doesn't tell me if i don't select any option and click send or don't select any option and don't click anything so actually this is a good example where probably most uh, of the heuristics are being violated here in this in this very short fragment um okay 
even more annoying is that this pop-up came up every time we open the portal la didattica hmm? every day uh, i hope that today is the 17 oh no, the 18 so this is over and uh, we don't need to see it anymore but okay so uh, how can we possible solution answer okay okay i hate you okay mm, never mind no nah. okay. so uh, first of all we should recall the uh, nielsen heuristics uh, so we have them in chapter six uh, where i just put out the slides even if you don't remember we will never ask you which is heuristic number seven okay so don't you don't need to memorize actually the list and the numbers uh, uh, but of course the concepts uh, and probably the the, the, the keywords and the names uh, will be useful okay so we just pull them out here uh, just to, to remind, remind ourselves uh, of how to describe hmm, what we are seeing or what you are evaluating so um most of them or many of them are being violated here uh, the question asks the most important ones okay where are where you do you see the mo the strongest violation for example heuristic number one is also in some way violated because it doesn't tell me whether i, I already responded or not to this question whether i already seen it yesterday or not but it's compared to the other violations uh, it's less important or, or less uh, uh well less strong in, in, in a sense uh, so i will not put that uh, into my description okay we don't need uh, to list all of them so i think that the m the most important or the biggest error here is uh, in heuristic number three user control and freedom there is no cancel there is no no answer negative answer mm -hmm. there is no option for not replying or for replying no okay so i think this is the uh, number three user control and freedom again if you don't remember the exact wording of the number hmm, we don't care so much okay as long as it's uh, uh, one of the relevant uh, um, heuristics and so in this case the user cannot cancel and cannot reply no that's it we just have to uh, identify the violation and the reason for that we don't need to propose a solution right now okay um in heuristic evaluation you should have also to give in the process of heuristic evaluation you should also have to give a severity rate uh, but here it's not is not requested so let's not do more work than we require we just take the mind violation not the severity hmm? then other problems are um, well i would point to probably number 10 documentation so what is this about if do you want to participate to the seminar what is the seminar about where it is uh what's the program who are the speakers what's the content okay how can i know that before replying yes or, or yes uh, can i know something more hmm? so i would expect some way of getting more information about this item before deciding you are asking me a question without giving me the necessary information for replying there's no way of getting documentation so number 10 is help and documentation where uh, the user has no possibility of learning more about the event before deciding
even just but well, we're not requested here to suggest but if uh, this uh, uh, name of the seminar here would be a link that invites me to go and see the, the program would be would be enough or more information link somewhere hmm? or uh, an accordion like a, a section that can be open so a small plus sign or small arrow that will tell me okay we can expand this section and get more information none of this is present hmm? uh, so in this case not really help or documentation uh, it's just information that is needed for the user not to use the interface but to understand uh, the choice and the thing that the other um, the other uh, violation is more number it's a bit mm, between number one and number six the difficulty of the of uh, making uh, the two choices uh, different so in a way it's a, a visibility issue in which uh, option number one and option number two are not visibly different or there's no easy way uh, of uh, understanding what they are asking mm -hmm. and uh, uh, at, at the same time is uh, um, a recognition rather than recall a recognition issue because there are long texts uh, and you need to make an extra effort to recognize uh, uh, what they what they are asking mm -hmm. so in some way it's a mixture of uh, you can classify them as a visibility problem or uh, what is number four six six is a recall where the, the option the presented options are difficult to understand to distinguish hmm? okay these are, i think this would be my answer to this uh, question there are other minor issues, but uh, I think the major ones are, are here. Yeah? Okay, so you are asking. I don't know what happens after I click on the send button. Okay. I, I, I don't see it because I would need uh, a, a, um, a storyboard, for example. To, to see what happens next so right now we can only uh, reason about this part of the screenshot so uh, whether this selection is final or there will be another confirmation we don't know we know that we are sending a selection okay so that uh, would uh, what you're thinking probably it falls into the error prevention area so I click by mistake uh, can I correct it later I don't know we don't know here there's not enough information to check whether this part of uh, can I modify my choice after I submitted immediately or the day after we don't know so for now it's not a violation on this screen it could be in the next step is if it's done wrongly or it could not be if it's done correctly so I wouldn't you know, mm, put a shame on this screen if the next one is wrong is that your question okay so you, you we should not think what could possibly go wrong before or later or afterwards it's just in the screen from the screen what can what can we tell okay in heuristic evaluation we have the flow we have a, we have a set of uh, screens uh, and so we can do this kind of reasoning uh, what happens after the user selected and so on right now we don't have the information so So you are saying, uh, I'm just repeating for the recording, uh, that uh, uh, there is no information, there's no written information here that after you click on send, you cannot modify it. In the I, yeah, you, you, you would say that as a sort of violation of rule number 10 of documentation because it doesn't tell you what happens after clicking OK. Uh, I, I wouldn't like it. In, in any case so uh, you don't have uh, an explanation 
besides every button you click every confirmation button you click when you have to read the explanation to understand the button huh? this is, is bad design anyway so uh, documentation should be there if you need it should not be required to understand what what you're doing okay so in this case i think it's the only clear part of this uh, picture here is the send button i'm sending my choice can I modify it later? I don't know. Uh, in any case, writing, you, can, you will not be able to modify it. I think it would be another wrong decision. So if I write, you can modify it later, hmm? maybe. But you can modify it, uh, hmm, it's not a good decision. Hmm? It's not an interface issue, it's more a workflow issue. So never make a, you know, this uh, irre irreversible action. Okay, other questions? Yeah? What if I choose from, from uh, one of the two that you mentioned, but to the system interface, uh, and then you want to send it anymore? So you, you want to, yeah, if you, oh, so you, these are just radio buttons. None of them is pre-selected, which is good. Uh, if I click on the left one, and uh, I, I do, do you click on send or not? Uh, I don't click on send. You don't click on send, so nothing happens. No, but just just playing with the radio buttons doesn't send any information. Yeah, but what if uh, I change my mind? Yeah. I have to reflect the page. No. To unselect. To un to unselect. No, no, no. Eh, okay. Okay, okay, understand, understand. So, uh, what you're saying is uh, you are assuming that uh, not to uh, for not making a choice, you need to click on send without selecting any radio button. This may or may not be true, okay? Uh, personally, I didn't do that. I didn't try that, okay? I just say, okay, it will disappear sooner or later. I'm not doing anything, okay? So, because I interpreted, do not select any option as don't do anything. Just leave, me, leave it there, okay? That, your option is another uh, possibility. So, you understand, uh, uh, don't select any option like click on send without selecting anything okay which is of course is not a good uh, interaction pattern but in this case what you are saying is true so, so if i click on one radio button and then i, I want to deselect it uh, there is no ui for deselecting a radio button there's no user interface so uh, you're right you need to refresh the page and then click on send mm -hmm. which is a very uh, wrong way to go for point a to point b mm -hmm. So uh, all of this uh, is, a, is, a, is a consequence of the wrong wording of this and, uh, and the lack uh, of an evident uh, way of saying no. All of, that, all of these are consequences of, of point number three. If, what, if the mental model of the user, I want to say no, is not supported by the interface, the user will start wondering and thinking about strange things about how to accomplish it because it should be there mentally is there the option no hmm? and so oh, after that every answer is wrong in the sense that from, from the interface point of view because we are not uh, guiding the user in any way to the right choice and just in, uh, in some cases as i i'm not sure i i guess that this sentence was added in the next day the second day it was not there in the first uh, the first day to clarify but actually instead of clarifying was just more confusing okay the second exercise is another question on the same interface this is a constructive one okay so uh, given that this is wrong we don't ask you why can you design a better one uh, implementing the same functionality and this is something that you're just asking for a wireframe so a very uh, quick sketch okay so right now for now for us it, it's in some way easy because you already discussed uh, about uh, the, the the problems of the first one so we should uh, of course uh, 
give the user the option to enroll or not in the seminar if he wants to enroll then select the date which is enrolling and selecting the date are two different actions and uh, um, the possibility of knowing more about uh, the, the seminar so how would uh, would i put that into a a wireframe um i not i don't have a tool for writing so i'll try to just sketch it in the in word so uh, the idea is a dialogue in which i i, I would i would just write a, a title uh, like uh, let's go into a new page like um, seminar or teaching life seminar this is the title and then we have the question so this is the title of the dialogue hmm? let's put it in bold and then we have the question uh, do you want uh, op um, to enroll in the seminar and the title blah 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 okay so a very explicit question do you want to enroll yes or not so you put a radio button with yes and radio button with no for example one possibility and then two buttons at the bottom like uh, send or confirm And in the case of yes, so close to the yes, I would put uh, um, an option for selecting the date. So I, in my mind, I have a drop down with two options. Uh, so something with select the date, and then we have a down arrow. And if selected, it will tell me the two options: 16 December uh, at uh, what are the hours? Uh, 14, 18, and then the second option would be the 17 of December, same hours. Hmm? So just. Imagine graphically, now this is a dialogue with a title, a question, two options, and if you select this one, then this uh, drop-down menu will be enabled, and you can select uh, one of the two options, and then confirm. This is one possible design. Yeah. <sighs> What, what does it mean canceling this contest? I don't want to decide right now. Hmm? I would call it, yes, ask later, or not now, hmm? or some wording like that. Say, okay, I know, I don't want to, uh, uh, so dismiss this dialogue right now, I will, but ask me later. It may, it may be useful just to delete the, the window right now, but uh, uh, I wouldn't pull, I wouldn't call it cancel hmm? because we, I, uh, it's not clear if I'm canceling for now or canceling forever or canceling is equivalent to replying no. Hmm? It's too, uh, too, in this context, it's too ambiguous. Another 
possible uh, design but will be more, more difficult to have, is to have two buttons enroll don't enroll or ask me later the problem is uh, selecting the date which if, if I have the button enroll uh, I, I don't have the possibility of asking the person the date hmm? and and again the choice whether to enroll yes or no and the when to go should be kept separate hmm? you should not mix them into four buttons uh, enrolling in the 16 or on the 17 hmm? in any case yes oh yes yes i forgot uh, so then we have two options also to give documentation one could be oh sorry to transform the title into a link so that the link uh, uh, could bring us to the news to the description and possibly also if people don't see it some more information button or link uh, below that hmm. Th they they both do the same okay they both go to some more information the second one is more explicit the first one is more embedded we can have both hmm. it's not a big problem I would put more info here at the top and not at the bottom because at the bottom we have the action button we have the decision to take and the information is about the seminar is not about the choice or a question mark or a help button something like that hmm? okay like it question number three list the main methods for knowing your users with a major advantage of each one hmm? listing the methods and the, uh, the advantage of one of them oh, yeah, one advantage for each of them okay again we see the main keyword okay so you don't if you don't remember all of them just uh, uh, at least the ones that are more important and just to have a reference where do we find uh, this information i just put a note on the slides is the chapter three slide number six something like that hmm. okay we have this uh, discussion where uh, there are these three big categories for knowing your users talking observing or imagining okay so we could have this the description of these three uh, main categories and maybe inside of this uh, uh, pulling up the most uh, important uh, uh, methods um, that we that we remember at the time hmm. so for example it could be it's also easy because some of these methods you apply them so one possibility could be for example uh, talking to users with interviews uh, the other is uh, uh, user surveys it's an indirect indirect way of uh, of talking to the users user observation and uh, well maybe diaries mm -hmm. 
observation diaries. It's one possible choice, of course, which, uh, which are the most important for, e from, for each of you, depends. And uh, we need to, to list, uh, uh, you know, the, the request here is list, is not explain or describe. Okay, so you don't need to explain what it means to make a user survey. Otherwise, we would have asked uh, explain or describe. Hmm? So that's why the, the content is more impo is important, not just, we don't count how many words you write, okay? Uh, but the, uh, the advantage of each one, so a user survey, for example, the advantage is that you can reach uh, many people, hmm? wide reach of people why uh, of while talking to the user interviews what is the advantage compared to your surveys uh, that you can make follow-up questions maybe basically so if you're just following a script is not much different maybe it's more comfortable because you know it's a one-to-one -one, uh, but it's also more expensive the, the, the real advantage is you can do follow-up questions And of course, uh, you can have more in-depth uh, knowledge hmm? because, of course, talking is much more natural, and we have all the non-verbal language that comes into help. Uh, uh, user observation. What are the advantages of user observation? Uh, I think the the main one is uh, having the context. So uh, sh seeing how the user interacts with the context. And from an interview, it doesn't, ca it doesn't come out uh, because people are not able to think about why they are doing things, okay? So um, as uh, information about the context and interaction with the context. So we can discover something that the user don't even know or are not aware of. And uh, for example, for observation diaries, if we convince people to take uh, a diary of what they are doing, uh, we can have a more uh, longer time, longer observation time over maybe weeks. Uh, we cannot follow a person for a week uh, without going to jail. Um, And also, let's say, as they call in the wild, uh, people are in their normal environment, so there are no artificial setting in which we are observing them. is a classical theory question um, number four describe my advantage and disadvantage of a paper prototype compared to a high fidelity prototype uh, one where we also care about the visual design okay um, so uh, I would probably okay list uh, make a table where we have the paper prototype and the uh, high fidelity prototype and I'll try to list uh, plus and minus points okay so the paper prototype is quicker To realize hmm? uh, it can the other advantage that is focuses on content you don't get distracted by colors and fonts because they are not there okay focuses on content and interaction and uh, yes and uh, flow of action what do we do next hmm? 
uh, on the other hand if i fidelity prototype of course i we don't need to write uh, the the opposite of each of them okay so plus quickly to realize minus slower to realize okay let's not waste time waste time uh, stating the options so let's just see uh, write something which is uh, something new something different okay um, so for example is uh, we can focus on layout uh, and interaction detail is this button visible is it in the right position so concerning the testing or the interaction uh, a high fidelity prototype may be also remotely tested i give you a link uh, just have a look navigate through it a paper prototype we, we must be there uh, in the same place so this is an advantage of this of course is a disadvantage for the other uh, about what happens when the user does something unex unexpected okay so uh, if the user does some action that you didn't expect means that it means that you didn't prepare the prototype in both forms neither on the paper neither on the on the high level high fidelity so in this case uh, you, it, nothing happens if it clicks on a button that you didn't think for, uh, of uh, the button will not be active huh? so this is a, in a way is a limitation that uh, uh, to pre-designed functionality in in the other case uh, well may improvise hmm? so you are there with the user you can make up something on the moment uh, to uh, imagine how the next step would be of course then that's one of the reason why we need to test in small groups because then the next day we need to to correct the error and uh, add uh, some action so this is, this is not possible with a software prototype a high fidelity prototype so we just yeah but on the other hand is uh, uh, the high fidelity prototype invites uh, more exploration you just need to click it's easier it's easier to see everything all the screens on the paper it's slower and uh, in a way you know that the people is shifting paper so uh, you don't have a it doesn't seem to the user you know, so easy to click or to move rather than just having it and clicking so people are more open to explore the interface and not just the task that you presented them hmm? so this could be the main points course for each plus on there will be a corresponding minus that we don't write um, we could add uh, uh, that the paper prototype are more suitable for a uh, early stage of design and the high fidelity for late stage of design but this will not be the answer to the question Okay, that would be uh, the answer to a question where, where, where they are more suited, uh, where they are more useful. This just asks for the intrinsic differences, not how they fit into the, the flow. Hmm? So, we don't need to talk about something which is not asked. Um, question five, well, again, it's a theory question in this case of it's a described not just list so it's asking for a 
some more words here about the need finding methods main types of user observation so i will i would jump uh, for example to this part of the presentation where we have uh, some idea about the types of observations that there are no uh, as we discussed it we don't have a list of types observation type number one two three four five with names uh, but we have a lot of options and we decide uh, for example to uh, to be a, a part of the group to observe from outside um, to talk to the users or not the time for how long uh, whether we stimulate the job uh, so try to do this task or not whether we ask the user to talk while we are doing so there are different variations hmm? and uh, how we what we serve and uh, how we collect the data so in this case uh, we just have to write something huh? uh, outlining the main uh, the main methods so i think that it, it talks explicitly about user observation okay so we know that there is a user and there is an, an, an observer So the main types, uh, I think the main difference uh, in observation method is uh, the role of the, of the server part of the group uh, or external to the group. I think it's the main choice then you have a lot of other smaller choices hmm? um, describe the main type of so in this case we can describe is the word so uh, the observer acts uh, as one of the users interact with the users in their task or external to the group uh, means uh, observing without interacting and uh, being noticed as uh, Little, little as, as possible so try not to be noticed be entirely unnoticed impossible but we try to notice it be noticed as, as little as possible and um, in both cases the observer collects data and notes during the task and may have a follow-up interview or discussion much more discussion than an interview discussion with the users hmm? it's one possible the text at the beginning said uh, uh, the length should be five ten lines so maybe a bit longer than this but not much longer so this is uh, an example of described a uh, described question then Question number six uh, is uh, explain and provide an example. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, should be quite easy. The role con consistency in the design principles. Uh, 
it's one of the most important concepts so it should be easy to explain um, why the role of consistency why is consistency useful and give me an example about that uh, I also if we want to see where it was explained uh, we had the uh, number chapter number five in the guidelines of course okay there's the first rule of design was uh, consistency and uh, uh, the explanation is actually the same should lead to the same hmm. same action to lead to the same results uh, same uh, uh, layout or same color same appearance should have the same meaning and so on okay so uh, consistency exploits the user expectation that same leads to the same in this case we may have the same actions same or similar actions lead to same or similar results same uh, uh, appearance signifies means similar same uh, or br um, brings the same meaning etc this can be applied within an interface we called it uh, internal consistency or across different uh, applications which is uh, external consistency or design standard adhering adhering to design standards then we have to provide an example hmm. we, we have millions of examples to choose choose for example of internal consistency of internal all buttons should look the same color shape size with a uh, uh, specific highlight on default buttons all default buttons should look the same all the buttons but in particular the default ones have a specific layout mm -hmm. if you want to draw a sketch or just another example of external consistency maybe the location of the uh, search or login functions on a website Or the behavior pop-up menus we have really millions of examples here okay number seven explain the difference between recognition and recall in the context of Nielsen usability heuristics and provide a simple example again about Nielsen heuristics uh, we already had the file open recognition rather than recall was heuristic number six hmm. minimize user memory load by making object action option visible a user should not have to remember information from one part of the dialogue to another 
but just to find the answers there okay on the screen on screen on the interface directly okay. so the explanation between recognition and recall so these are two different uh, this is not about uh, the heuristic role it's asked about uh, the meaning and the difference of meaning within the between these two concepts these are two mental processes okay so recognition it's a mental process where the user uh, finds in the user interface the information that he needs to select and understand his next action in a way the information uh, the, the needed information is part of the evaluation process remember the evaluation gulf and the execution gulf so in evaluation you are receiving information and uh, all the information you need uh, you're receiving them now by interacting with the screen on the contrast the recall is a mental process where the user needs to remember some information that were presented in the past in order to proceed in order not to proceed to understand how to proceed even the step before uh, and this past uh, it could be a very simple past uh, like the screen before so it's one split second before or maybe something that you have provided at registration time something that uh, you learned in previous interactions etc hmm? imagine you are creating a folder and you should remember the name of the, co of the folder that you created because it doesn't show you the list most of the for example command line interfaces work on this recall method you should know the command you should know where the files are you should know uh, if you don't remember you have, you have you must for example list the folders and then you can read it and recall what you read because you have to rewrite it hmm? so maybe it's a it's a small step but it's something that uh, should go through your memory before you enter this information hmm? so for example uh, well a simple example just to continue what i was saying uh, an example is uh, uh, a visual list of folders so in uh, an explorer like interface the list of available folders uh, exploits uh, recognition while having to enter the folder name uh, requires um, recall one of the many possible examples so we can can we jump to the to last questions 
describe the structure and the goal of the SUS questionnaire so this is one question for from the last uh, class so it was chapter 12 uh, slide in this case 24 <coughs> SUS is a system usability scale hmm? so they are asking us uh, the structure and the goal so what is it useful for, for and how is structured so I prefer to start with the goal because my mind is top-down thinking so uh, the SUS questionnaire is a quick uh, way a quick instrument, uh, quick uh, so interview instrument, survey instrument. So first of all, it's a survey because a set of closed questions that you can deliver to the users for evaluating the usability of interface. I would say at the at a macro level, at a course level, it, it's not focused because you don't know what's wrong. Which by the user cannot select. Okay, th there was a usability problem with the close button. No, you have you have a general impression. Hmm? The structure it is structured as a set of questions. Do you remember how many are there? Ten items. Okay, if so, if we remember, we write it with a, a five point Likert scale response. Uh, what always what is particular of this scale is that the the questions are in alternating orders okay so some enact a positive uh, uh, reaction and some enact a negative reaction so that the user is not too easily pushed or biased towards uh, being kind or being very harsh okay so the questions alternate uh, good statements with bad statements and an overall score is computed by uh, it's not a sum of the but uh, uh, by simple formula from the user replies then of course this formula will take into account the, the, the two directions if we want we could probably add some information about what kind of questions okay so what are the dimensions that this SUS scale is uh, uh, probing is asking for no? it's the complexity is the difficulty easy or difficult uh, i need it so it's worded in different ways but uh, complexity uh, difficulty which is are different concepts of course uh, uh, integration and consist consistency learnability hmm, and confidence more or less they are not actually coupled two by two they're more mixed uh, in order to avoid recognition of a pattern from the user so but we can summarize and uh, say the main co uh, dimensions that are explored in SUS in SUS are um, difficulty consistency learnability 
uh, what did we say complexity and confidence I confidence I feel at home in this interface I don't feel some Maybe I, I should uh, add uh, at the beginning the evaluate and distributed interface at the course level to be administered after some tasks uh, have been proposed to the test users. So you cannot just select it. Uh, before interacting or just by seeing the home page you need to execute some tasks that are proposed and after then after those uh, you can give a, a general evaluation the evaluation will not be uh, on the single task hmm? some dimensions here like learnability or confidence cannot does not apply do not apply to a specific single task so you execute some task and then gi you give an overview, one single overview about all the interface. So that's why I call that uh, a course level, mm. the overall level. But it's just one of the many possible explanations, of course. Okay. Any questions or about these exercises or in general about the exam? We believe that one hour is more than enough time for this part. Okay. You would probably write a bit more than what I could write here in real time, but I have twice the number of questions. Okay, so these are is, is the written part. Uh, as I said, in, in general, we will uh, make another exercise like this. Um, maybe we will make it more interactive. Like I won't publish the questions before, but just in the last minute when you go in class, uh, so you can try. We do that more interactively. We so today it was better to have class-like exercises that we have the recording so people that could not be here at least have an idea but when we are closer to the exam i think it's better to do an exam simulation like that okay so we provide four exam four questions or maybe six just to have a more exercise you do that you do those and we discuss uh, together of course there will not be the recording but probably it's more useful okay when you are closer to the to the preparation of the exam uh, this part will be on the dates that you find uh, in the portale okay then for the uh, presentation of the projects uh, we'll we'll ask you separately we'll uh, book the lab in different dates uh, that are and I, I remember i remind you once more that the two parts of the exam are totally independent okay so feel free to present the project and then uh, uh, give the test in other dates and so on as long as we are in the same year okay so i don't see any questions so in tomorrow we'll meet uh, in the lab for for your work so you continue working and this afternoon i will upload the comments to the last deliverable so if we have any questions we can discuss them during the lab tomorrow thank you <laughs>